Good afternoon, everybody. It's Marsha from Oils and Wellness with Marsha. And um, in the background, you probably can hear sizzling. I'm making fried chicken on a very low, low fire. So I can do my video before the chicken needs turned. So hopefully I can get that red in time. If not, I'll push pause, turn the chicken, and then come back. But today I'm talking about uh, Deborah Rayburn. Yeah, Rayburn. She's one that uh, wrote the part about from bread baker to bread winner. So here we go. We're finishing up chapter four today. It was a beautiful Monday morning, a day spent homeschooling our 12-year-old daughter, Sharon. Preparing meals, a little sewing and, and crocheting, and enjoying being the stay-at-home mom. But this wouldn't turn out to be just an ordinary Monday. For that evening, our world would be rocked to its core. After 21 years of marriage, my husband Paul suddenly experienced a change of address <clears throat> to heaven. By Tuesday morning, I was planning a funeral, a great move for him. But, oh, I wouldn't treasure for years to come. He was a breadwinner. I was the bread baker. As the days unfolded, I began to follow, com fully comprehend the gravity of the financial situation, raising a 12-year-old daughter along. Marketable skills for a well-paid job completed absolute and oh yes $165,000 in debt with no backup to rely on I knew it would be up to me to provide for us my work ethic was great and my entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit was alive and well but where would it take me God has put God was about to totally transform our lives and grow me in ways I didn't see see coming. I am I never asked why. Somehow I always knew Paul's death would mean life to us, but didn't know how it would manifest. My passion with herbs and healthy eating. Things I was already sharing on a small scale were a uh, catalyst catalyst for meeting our needs and beyond. I was already having fun teaching bread making <clears throat> and soap making classes and even more basic herbal workshops out of our home in the country. But even all these were not enough to provide income necessary to help us dig out of this such a deep hole. And and that didn't even count the long hours of messy kitchen and my messy kitchen my daughter and I to clean up after class. I tried a couple of homeschooling cells related endeavors which by then needed money but it wasn't where my heart was. Nor did I feel it was the sustainable in the long run. I was looking for a larger term opportunity that wouldn't pro that would provide the, an income for years to come. I continued to pray and ponder my situation, looking for a better way. One day, we saw a TV commercial that had the average American was six thousand dollars in debt. My daughter and I high-fived and laughed. We are so above average. <laughs> that was a good one. Although we laughed, my heart hurt. I knew I needed to do more. I needed to find a way to dig out of this mess. I love natural products and had spent a great deal of time learning about them and their ap applications. I knew there was an opportunity to help others 
while also helping my family. Certainly there were other like-minded women with children at home and the house to take care of who wanted to earn a few extra dollars sharing what they loved. So I started my own small venture and I could also present as a business opportunity to other women in my shoes. I, com I committed to not turning back until I was 100% debt free and had a steady reliable income for Sharon and me. This took five years but they were some of the best and most difficult most best years of my life. Our quilting hobby, crocheting, scrapbooking, bread making and shelved for a while but I never I mean, I'm sorry, but I knew they would return one day. It was a, a small sacrifice that would pay off big in the long run. The journey wasn't easy. There was long hours for me and long car rides for Sharon, who watched movies in the back seat DVD player. Before long, both of us had soon memorized the, the script lines for, from our favorites. <laughs> Fresh ground nut butter and whole fruit puree sandwiches and whole wheat bread aka peanut butter and jelly and the thermals of chicken soup served with as lunch for most trips occasionally we stop at a fast food restaurant for snacks only because we were using the bathroom and I felt we needed to buy something my safari van saw many m miles of, un of air conditioning went out and the power windows wouldn't roll down. Thankfully, there was signs of success. Our debt decreased. And we had enough money to buy a new car to drive all those Texas sharing, all over Texas sharing my love of natural wellness. I remained focused on my plan yet determined to live life to the fullest because I knew firsthand it could could be cut short in an instant. Nearly 12 years later, I can say I'm actually living the dream, my dream. I have a big, beautiful home, a condo on the beach, a passport used in, in over 20 countries, and friends around the globe. My daughter is grown and married, and has a business of her own that provides a solid foundation that continues to flourish and change lives every day. I learned that if you have the need or the dream for a better life, start now. Don't wait until what ifs in life force you to drastic change. There was no quitting or turning back for me. I resolved to create a and build a business that would that would more than abundantly supply our needs. It wasn't always easy, but I believed in what I was doing and I believed in me. Living my way, you can you throw living may throw you a curveball. Something unexpected, something terrible. If it does, lean in. You are stronger than and more capable than you know of this, I am sure. Whether you're a 19-year-old college student or a 23-year-old newlywed or a 30-year-old single mom or a 50-year-old CEO of your own company, there are basic financial tactics that will move you toward the ULA life. Even later, in your 60s or 70s, it's not too late to take better control of your finances. What do we recommend? Crush your debt, first thing. If there's one thing we see that truly sucks the life out of people, it's debt. In fact, it is so evil that 20, I mean that 2000 years ago, the Bible warned us against going into debt. Today you can finance everything from a $199 juicer to SeaWorld tickets. What? 
One of our favorite authors is radio host and financial expert Dave Ramsey, who said the only acceptable debt is a 15-year mortgage with 20% down, where the monthly payments are no more than 25% of your total take-home pay. We agree. Credit card debt, student loans, second mortgages, mortgages, leases on the car, because you can conduct the interest. You can deduct the interest. And take on bigger mortgage payments to get a, a better tax write-off. None of this makes sense financially. Every dollar you pay in interest is a dollar you do not have. Period. It's a tr it's a ratchet. It's a ratchet. A racket. With banks and financial service companies making money once you've you've heavily in debt. If you eventually want to be sitting on the beach and everyone else working, that doesn't happen by continually paying interest. Don't listen to people who advise you to go into debt. They're likely making money off of you, or you, or want you to join them so their own debt freeze more normal. Let me turn this chicken. I'll be right back. Okay. In the same way, you shouldn't take financial advice from someone who's trying to sell you something. Car companies who push leases is a great deal as a great deal are really just trying to sell you a car to, by making it affordable enough to get the paperwork signed and that car off the lot. Furniture companies who promise easy financing are trying to sell you furniture you can't afford. Don't fall for these tactics. If you are in debt and wish you had read the this advice years ago, if you take you took out a hundred thousand dollars in student loans to study for a career that pays thirty two thousand dollars a year, or if you are clobbered in the la last recession recession and find yourself underemployed with persistent debt, it's not too late to rewrite your story. Pay down your smallest debts first by making the biggest payments you can afford. Then tackle the, the, the next biggest debt, then finally your mortgage. Calculate how long it will take to become debt free and don't deviate from your plan. By underbalanced, be underbalanced, temporary if you have to. Take on two more jobs if you need to. But no matter what, don't take on more debt than you're trying to pay off what exists now. Sacrifice now and win later. Increase your income. In the same in the same way, you should do everything you can to create surplus money. This will accelerate your ability to pay off debt. Build a seven month emergency fund and start and start you on the path to a life of financial abundance. Throw your life out of, of balance for a season if you have to. Crush that real estate thing. Pick up some side jobs. Grow a network marketing business. Build a mutual fund portfolio. Or do whatever else to begin to create extra income. Reduce debt and build residual income streams that will take care of your family long, long, run, long term. This is exactly what the Ula Guru, G-U-R-U, did to retire debt free at 42 years old he he apportioned each raise as follows upgraded lifestyle travel daily activities shopping credible giving using 10 percent debt reduction using 45 percent and increased investments using the remaining 45 percent for example if you received a thousand dollars per month raise uh he would Add $100 per month to lifestyle, probably donuts, <laughs> using $450 to reduce debt and in 
invest $450 in his mutual funds. Staying focused on the goal of financial freedom will help you do three things. Take back your life uh, by crushing your debt, keep you from making the same mistakes again, and most importantly, keep your focus on the, the excellent to okay, keep your focus on the excitement of your purpose and not to in the stress of your payments. And the last part give joyfully if you give if, if you grow your believing that money is evil we love you but you're wrong money is neutral it is simple as amplifier it's as simple as an amplifier yes if you're selfish greedy or indulgent more money will make you more of all these things but like most people we meet, if you are kind, res responsible, and generous, more money will allow you to be increasing kind, respons responsible, and generous. Give, giving is very ula. Just as you should be good stewards of your money that comes in, learn to become a joyful giver too. Be responsible for and build your surplus, but don't hold unto money with clenched fists. Clenched fists are not opening are not open to receiving more. More doesn't benefit the world unless it's flowing through you. Give a portion of your income away freely, willingly, and joyfully. Not only benefits others, it releases money's control on you so tomorrow i'll be reading chapter five starting chapter five uh, on ula family if you have problems with your family this would be a good good chapter to follow me on so i see you tomorrow i hope you got something out of the finances and hopefully you try this because i'm going to have a lot of changing changing to do to get my ula circle smooth so i see you tomorrow have a wonderful day Ta-ta.